What's going on everybody, Gar Hoover here, and today we're going to be going through my track Grateful, which I made on the PL33 alongside the Korg NTS-1. Now this track is more so an ambient track, it's my first attempt at ambient, and a lot of it is all made on the PO33 and the Korg NTS-1 just adds that space, it's got the reverb and delay, and that's all I'm using it for. So it's all coming out of the PO33. If you have yet to watch the video for Grateful, be sure to check it out up here. And if you wanna download the samples so you can make the track alongside me or make whatever you want with them, be sure to download those in the description. With that being said, let's take a look at this track. All right, so as always, let's start by looking at the samples. In this first sample, I've got the pad, made this in massive. It's just stacked octaves and fifths, and so that makes it really capable of being transposed around easily. It kind of sounds like some weird old Zelda stuff or something. Uh, anyways, onto the next sample. It's this nice pluck sound that I got from Prism. And then this was also some weird bell sound. It's got the shimmery sound to it that's great with reverbs, also from Prism. And this xylophone-ish type of sound, it's really hollow. It's different than the other plucked guitar tones, so I thought it was good to complement it. And we've got one more sound. And that kind of creates this fake riser reverb that goes with the pad super nicely. And that's going to do it for the samples. Now let's take a look at the intro of the track, and this kind of lays the foundation for the rest of the track, especially sonically. That really does create some vibe. So this actually only has two samples going right here. We've got that pad sound I mentioned, and that's only being triggered on the first step of the pattern. And it's just holding out. And that holds out into the second pattern as well. So it creates this nice loop of a continuous holding out pad sound without being re-triggered that much. So what that means is that the chord is being held out for two patterns. Now let's take a look at the second sample that's being used here. That's also triggered on the first step of the first pattern. And just like the other one, it's just being held out the entire time. So essentially, the second pattern has nothing on it. And it's just serving to let these samples run their course until they get re-triggered in the third pattern right here. And they're being re-triggered on a different note. And so now let's take a look at the chord for the third pattern. And that chord is just the fourth of the scale. And the shimmer pad is staying in sync and holding the same note as the original pad. And then the fourth pattern has nothing on it, just as we saw with the second pattern. It's just there to let the samples run their course. So now let's take a look at the verse section. Now this builds off of what we've heard in the intro, but adds some additional melodic texture and structure. Alright, so that sounds pretty good, and as I already mentioned, this is building off the chords that we've introduced in the introduction. We're just now adding the melody, if you want to call it that. So let's look at this guitar pluck. This really kind of drives the whole song. You hear it in almost every part except the intro. So if you were following my fingers there, or also listening, you probably heard that that rhythm isn't necessarily that straight. It's kind of bouncy, but you can hear that it kind of is just arpeggiating. It goes, it jumps up an octave, and then it drops down to that fifth. So with this kind of sporadic rhythm in the guitar, the notes for it are staying kind of within the chord that is, that is playing underneath it. So it kind of has structure and instability at the same time. So for the xylophone, it's only being played on 9 and 11 straight. And it's kind of this call and response between the plucked guitar and the xylophone. You can hear it clearly right here. So 
So notice that that second time through, there's no response from the xylophone. The xylophone's gone quiet. So it's kind of this conversation where the other person's kind of drifted off. But the conversation continues in this second section when the chord changes. We have another call and response conversation. So you can probably tell the rhythm is the same, but the melody's changed a little bit for this guitar. So we have that one and that four that are staying the same at the top, and a little bit of variation on 13 and 14, but we notice a big difference in the response from the xylophone. Notice that it hits three times there. There's a change in the conversation. The xylophone's responding a little bit differently. And notice this second half, it's just that pluck again. It's that quiet conversation that kind of fades off and helps transition into the next section. Now it's time to kind of look at what would be the chorus. It's got a little more momentum and a few more textures going on. So for this section, just like the intro, the pads are the exact same. So not much to cover there in regards to the pads for this section. Um, if we look though and listen, you can hear the guitars are still going. And it's that one and four once again. It's that kind of initial call and response that we're hoping for with the guitar, but we're hearing a different instrument this time that comes with it. So instead of having the xylophone, you could probably hear that we now have this uh, bell sound that's ringing out throughout the conversation. No xylophones. But something else you probably heard was there's not that shimmery sound that we heard with that initial pad. This time though, I did use it, it's just in a different way. I wanted that bell sound to shine a little bit more. You can hear this is actually brought an octave down. It sounds incredible. It sounds a lot different. And so by using it an octave down, I'm leaving more space. You hear how bright that is? It doesn't leave room for the bells to shine. But by bringing it down, there's still that texture that's taking place, but allowing a different instrument to kind of take center stage. So let's actually take a look at the melody that's taking place with the bells here because this is really the lead for this section. So we hear it's hitting the root of the chord, then going to the sixth, to the fifth, to the third. So that's kind of what we hear there with that melody at first. It's arpeggiating down the chord itself. It's staying within the structure of the chord. And that allows a new sound to be introduced without being too jarring because it's staying in a familiar chord structure. Similar rhythms between them all. And then we just had that final note on the third pattern. And in the fourth pattern, it jumps up an octave. Oh, how I triggered that, you didn't get to hear the pads with it. But you get the point. Let me show you. And there you can hear the octave jump with the support in the foundation of the chords. But notice that this pattern has a second section. It's really uh, an additional section. But the major change that's taking place in this section is the chord structure. We're already familiar with the chords that we've heard in the intro, right? And they've kind of played throughout the entire song. We had the one and the four of the scale. There's the first chord, and there's the second chord. 
So let's take a look at these chords within the context and how they relate to the rest of the song and add a little bit more momentum and drive. So we have the one right here, and then it goes up to the four. That's our normal structure, one to the four. And then we jump up to the sixth, adds a little bit more intrigue to the fifth. So we have this desire to come back home and that brings us back to the one. Do you guys kind of get that? Feel that relationship between those two chords. The fifth always wants to come home to the, oh, you can tell I'm very passionate about this. The fifth note in a scale always has this pull back to the first note. So we have that sixth that's triggered in the first pattern, and then the second pattern has nothing going on in it. And then in the third pattern, we go to the fifth, and then the fourth pattern has nothing going on. And so that's all that's really happening for that section. Now let's take a look at the shimmer pad and see how that plays a role. So it's playing the sixth alongside the chord for this section, which adds a jump. We went from the octave up there, so we're already having this shift in our ears to a brighter sound for this second go around on the chorus. And then, on the third pattern, we have it going to the fifth, bringing it back down a little bit further back to that home note that I was talking about. So let's hear this relationship between all these chords in play. There's that octave jump. So you can hear that this has some similarities and differences to the first half of the chorus. It has this level of dynamic change that's taking place. But if we look at the guitar, the guitar is following alongside these chord changes that are taking place. So we can hear there, the sixth, it's going from the one to the three of the sixth chord. Let me try and figure out that second part. Okay, so it drops down. So all that does is just walk from the six to the five. It's helping just assist in that transition downward. Which sounds pretty weird by itself, but within the context. Especially when you do it right. Let me show you leading into it well. That lands perfectly into the intro, which then helps lead back into the whole song again. It's that idea of coming back home for a little bit before adventuring back out. And that's going to do it for this video and this tutorial, but I can't emphasize enough how important it is to have good samples. That solid pad, that guitar, and the conversation between that and the xylophone, the bell sound, and this shimmery pad, they all mesh together so well. It's like this glue between the samples that holds the track fully together. A song is only as good as the samples, and the samples need to play well with one another. And that's going to do it for today's tutorial. If you want to watch more tutorials, you can check them out here in these playlists. I also have all my pocket operator videos here. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And as always, I hope you all have a great week. See ya.